What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Obsession. I'm Carl Bethke. I'm Mike Sadler. Mike. Carl. <sighs> you know, it's going to be the season before we know it. I know. I can't wait. No time. I know. I've been waiting forever. Jeez. So you Since last year. I know. It's stupid. It's just... Well, we get to hunt earlier this year, yeah. though. Yeah, that's true. We do. Everybody. We do get to hunt. We June can. hunt this year. June, June hunt. June bear hunt. Bears. Yeah. You hunt bears. Bears. I don't know bears when we're going to air this one. I don't know. We could be done by the time we air this show. Yeah, buddy. Two full body black bears going into houses. It could happen. Could happen. It could happen. It could happen. It could happen. Hopefully our wives don't see this till after. Oh, that God. I just shouldn't even said that. All right. Just That's that. okay. My wife doesn't watch anyway. She listens to me enough the way it is. That's true. Mine doesn't watch anything. <laughs> She's like, you did a podcast? When what? did that start? <laughs> Get out of here. You only been doing it for three years yeah. now? Jesus. That's what you're doing down there? thought I seen you guys on TV yeah, once. Yeah, it was us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, isn't that the truth? Oh, good Lord. <laughs> All right, so this is one that we've been dealing with recently, and we've recently got some bad news on this, which annoys us both, but uh, it's a legitimate question from Ken. It says, is the hunting in industry in general the issue that causes the biggest problems with, with getting tags and public access? Well, Ken... Yes. Yes. <laughs> I a hundred percent think so. Especially uh, now again this year. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, social media, what you guys are watching, podcast stuff, watching us right now, is part of the problem with with uh, getting tags. It's per and I don't want to say you don't want to promote the hunting industry because you do. You know, you want to promote hunting in general. We are the minority, not the majority. Uh, we are the ones that help uh, keep animal numbers where they should be. Um, we are the uh, people that pretty much finance most of uh, animal control and things throughout the United States. Uh, and we're the ones that definitely do all the research. Okay. Uh, negative parts of it are that I think some people have misconceptions about what they see. Um, and you're just going to be able to go out and do it. It isn't like it used to be. Um, Number-wise, animals out west have been affected severely, um, maybe not so much in the last year or two, uh, but by cold, long, steep snow winters. We lost a lot of animals that way, mm -hmm. um, which has affected the amount of tags that people are eligible for. Um, for some reason, after COVID, I think uh, hunter numbers increased because people went online and started seeing all this stuff, and they thought it was cool, and they wanted to give it a try, which is cool. <clears throat> you but, want to get out and do something. Yeah, it has affected our abilities to draw and receive tags out west and then with the numbers declining uh, from whether it be whitetail, elk, mule, deer, antelope uh, due to hard winters, uh, not talking about the last two years, but uh, the few years before that, that's why the numbers are down and the mass amount of numbers of people requesting to hunt has increased. So it is definitely harder to draw tags. And the cost is going up. That's what I think uh, is part of the issue, promoted partially by us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously we love the hunting industry. Uh, we don't love everything about the hunting industry. No. I mean, we love hunting. Yes. Uh, you know, this, what we do is part of the hunting industry, obviously. Obviously. So... Uh, do we like everything about it? No. Does, do we think it's affected tags? 100%. Um, you know, we're going on no year three. Yes. So uh, not getting a tag in a, our most favorite place to ever hunt. Yeah. Um, again, with points, with whatever, with a public place or a private, you know, place to go. Um, and they keep making it harder and harder and harder. 
to Thank get you. Them. And the numbers are small anyway. <laughs> yes. I mean, they're they're very small anyway. Um, you know, there's some states that have done some good things. You know, South Dakota is one of them, in my opinion. Yeah. Obviously, it doesn't benefit us. 100% it benefits us. Yes. But it also benefits the people that are out there trying to live um, and make money because, you know, you know, make no mistake, like, we piss and moan, Carl and I do a lot about non-resident tags here. It's not people getting the tags. It's the minimal cost of them getting the tags. Because mm -hmm. um, obviously at the end of the day, that money comes to our state. Yes. Helps our conservation, um, helps everything we do, which is, that's what we want. That's awesome. Problem is we just think it should be more money. Agreed. Which other people don't agree with us, but if you live here, you should agree with us. Yeah, I don't There's know why you would. They shouldn't agree with us on that. Yeah. We're not saying take away non-resident tags. We're just no. saying, you know, make it make it harder to get, uh, make it more money. Brings in more money here. Brings in more money to everything here. All the businesses here, everything around. That's just the way it works. So, you know, states like us, it's not a problem. No. Because anybody can come here and get a tag. You know, but other states, it's a problem. It is. You know, the Dakotas, it's a problem. Wyoming, Wyoming, Montana, yeah. Colorado, I mean... Any of the Western game. Yeah, anything out there. It used to be, you know, years back, you know, the hard draws were, you know, elk hunting in Utah, yeah. Arizona, um, New Mexico, things like that. Those draws now are almost impossible. Matter of fact, I know one guy has been applying 17 years. Not in a lifetime. Yeah. Well, for his Arizona elk tag, and now, granted, it's a specific unit. Yeah, now, trust me. I get it. But, you know, 17 years. Yeah. I mean, as we get older, <laughs> our chances of being able to perform on a hunt to goes do down a little bit, too. Yeah. Uh, but that being said, you know, there's, there's some states that are, and they're not doing the wrong thing. It's just that that much more interest has become, it's become more popular. And I don't know if I think it's because from what I'm seeing, a lot of these people think that it, that's how you prove you're a man or something like that. You know, you got to go out and be a hunter and this, that, and the other thing. Uh, it seems to be a lot with a younger group of people. Um, and that's fine. If you want to take it up and, and be serious about it and go out and hunt, I think that's great. And everybody starts somewhere. Um, but don't expect to be able to draw tags um, like your dad did. Yeah. <laughs> so that's not the same anymore. Not the same anymore. It's hard. Uh, things are expensive too. I mean, hunting's become far more expensive. You know, where we didn't get a tag, we still yeah. go. Oh yeah. We go every year. Um, our price went up to go there. Yep. Still gonna pay it. Yep. Still gonna go. Don't yep. have the tag. We're gonna hunt whitetails. Yep. Is what it is. You know? Do we want to go out there and hunt whitetails? No. No. You know, but we're going to go. Yeah. So we're still going to bring just as much money. We're going to spend just as much money. We're still going to go because we want our spot. You yes. know, at the end of the day. So, and that's how this place works for us. Yeah. Just so you guys know, <clears throat> when you see some of our stuff, uh, we've been hunting at some of these places. Well, Mike and I, the place we're talking about, we've been hunting there together over 25 years mm -hmm. now. Um, you're not going to be able to just go in without paying huge amounts of money to get into these really good spots. Yeah. It's really that simple. Um, hunting has become a very yeah. money-oriented business. You know, I think one of the problems that I see is that it pushes it more towards the outfitter way. It does. People that can get tags and sell them to you at a substantial cost. Yeah. You know, which everybody that watches this knows Kyle and I aren't uh, hunting with guide no. people. We're no. just not. Um, and I'm not bashing a guide. Nope, so they're don't, great. Don't start yeah. with, <laughs> I'm not saying that. Right. We just don't do it. Right. We want to do it together on our own. That's what we want to do. It's, it's DIY. Thoughts. You know, DIY, that's what we do. Um, to make us better than you? No. No. But this is what we do. It's what we want to do. Yep. So just clarify that right now before everybody starts sending us hate mail again. <laughs> it, do it anyway. Right. But, <laughs> so it's great for that aspect of the industry. The guiding part, but if you've looked at any guided hunts, well, they're a lot of money. Oh my god, a mule deer hunt, I'll <coughs> ask, guided mule deer hunt, two on one right now, you're spending each $6,000 for a mule deer hunt. Yep. 
Because we've looked. Yeah. Because we looked at other places to mule deer hunt. Right. See, you know, if we could get another spot to go. Well, if we want to spend that. And that's not everything? No. No, that's not driving no. out there, getting out there, your equipment, your food. Well, it, it's probably, probably your food. food. Yeah. Place to stay. But then, you you know, if you are successful, you got taxidermy, you got to get everything back. They're going to want to tip. Uh, they're going to want, oh, yeah. Well, that's the other part. So. <laughs> When you uh, go out west and you have guides, remember to tip them people, <laughs> and you should tip them well because yeah. they are probably the reason you are successful. Yeah. Especially the first couple times you go out. Well. Yeah, I mean, I was, you know, obviously, you know, we're going to Canada in two weeks. We live in Canada, right? So yes, we have a guy that's up there running baits for us, for us to go bear hunting. Obviously, you know. Yeah. Um, is he going to take us out in a stand and sit with us? No. Yeah. Um, is it up to us what we shoot? Yes. You know, or if we shoot, make a good shot, decide what we're going to do. But if we get bears, we're going to tip him. Even if we don't get bears, we're going to tip him. He's put his work in. Yeah. You know, so don't take away from that. I mean, that's how a lot of those people make a living, which, again, is where we go back to. It kind of sucks on that aspect of people's part of their livelihood, not being able to get hunters to come out because you can't get a tag anymore. Yeah. And like when Mike was saying earlier, you talked about South Dakota. The way South Dakota solved that, and this I think is the greatest idea ever. 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 Way is better than the wheel. Way correct. <laughs> and that's saying something. That is. The wheel's pretty uh, cool. Wheel is kind of neat. Is they decided that uh, these these ranchers who are cattle ranchers. <laughs> Um, for they allow, living. yeah, for a living. They allow hunters to come onto the ranch and hunt antelope, mule deer, whitetails, whatever the free roaming animal happens to be on their property. Um, and you can buy either private land tags over the counter to hunt on these people's property with these people if you have a place to go, or you apply for public land and you can hunt public land. Um, if you don't get drawn, here's a for instance. So this year, Mike and I both applied for the public private tag. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't get drawn, but Mike did. So while we're out there, there's some private or public land between our private land. If we're cruising along, all of a sudden there's a good animal on public land. Mike's got the tag. He can go after it. And that means, guess what? Cameraman. Cameraman. <laughs> Cameraman, <laughs> which is great. Um, and maybe next year, because I have points, then I'll draw and we'll alternate back and forth that way. But either but way, we're getting tags. Either way, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be buying my private land tag, which by the time you guys see this show air, I will have already purchased. Correct. That being said, we're both going to be able to hunt the private land yep. for the same animals. So that's awesome. Yeah, that's what we go there for. Those people that let us hunt, that we pay them to hunt on their property, and then we pay for the tags, and then we pay, we we bring our own stuff, we we cut up our own animals, we debone everything, we do all the work, keep the hides, keep everything, we bring our own freezer mm -hmm. to transport our animals, so the people where we stay don't have to do any of that. They give us a great place to stay, yeah. we pay them a good amount of money, they and us. they make their money, yeah. and everybody's happy. Yeah, and I mean, it's part of their livelihood. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're ranching out there, yeah. you know, 365. Yeah. So you're taking away, you know, a source of income for them, which is hard because they're dependent on everything. Yeah. Weather, especially, you know, and so that is a great system. You know, we wish North Dakota would do it. And we watched, we watched that huge podcast on that North Dakota hunting, how they've been talking about the tag situation. Yeah. You know, they have some good ideas. In my opinion, and they had some bad. They had some bad ideas, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, and the opinion for anybody. I mean, let's be honest. Is always going to be what's going to benefit you. Right. It is what it is. Yeah. You know, um, and everybody gets the numbers game. We get the numbers thing. Um, we play the numbers game yeah. just like everybody else. We play does. it, you know. But you know, the, if you're looking at in general your state's survival and the people in it, South Dakota's nailed it. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, they have. Um, you know, maybe more people follow, maybe they don't. Um, obviously here, you've heard us piss and moan about it all the time. Everybody gets two or three or four tags. Yeah. No matter what. Gun, um, bow. They get two buck tags. Yeah. 
and they can get up to at least eight antlerless yeah, tags, depending on yeah, what county they're in. Colony. So, I mean, that's, that's a lot for it's no money. Lot. It's cheap. Yep. It you don't know, have to be landowners. No. Um, basically have to just pay their small sum, and they can shoot uh, 10 deer in our, in, our, in our state. Right. In certain counties. Two bucks for sure. That's how everybody comes here. That's why they do. I mean, well, I mean, think about it. I mean, it's it's a cheap way to hunt, and you can take. I mean, you're hunting in a world class state, mm -hmm. and you're not paying enough money, in my opinion. No, we live here, so we're kind of spoiled. But Again, yeah, that's that's what I have to say about that part of it. Yeah, so it's yeah, it's definitely hurt it. Yeah, I think the hunting industry in general, we promote it. Uh, we try to make things too easy anymore. Uh, that's another part of it. Um, but we promote the heck out of it, and now it's to the point to where it's becoming even more of a rich man's sport. Yeah, and there is no perfect answer. No, there and is not, not. And there never will be. Because you want everybody to be able to have the opportunity yeah. to hunt. Everybody, We're not saying yeah, any of that. Everybody should have the opportunity to hunt, but you know, how do you regulate it? You know, private, public, you know, like I said, South Dakota does it different. I think it's pretty neat how they do it. Yeah. Because you, well, the, you know, you take... You know, I think one thing too, you take a lot of those private land hunters and it takes them away from even applying. Mm -hmm. A lot of them aren't going to apply yeah. for that public tag anymore. Yeah. So no. it opens that back up now for more opportunity. Yep. For people to get a public land tag out there. And there's a lot of good public land out there oh, yeah. to hunt. And if you, I, I think if you're just learning, <clears throat> if you're just learning to hunt out west, let's just say you're from the east coast, midwest or whatever, and you're deciding to go out west, which is great, don't get me wrong. I think your first few hunts should be based off of probably trying to do a DIY on yourself mm -hmm. on, on public land. Yeah. I mean, that's how we did it the first few times oh, yeah. and progressed through until we finally got an opportunity mm -hmm. to lease a piece of private for a week. For a week a year. A week a year, okay. and we hunted. So that's how, that's how it works for us. The other thing... Um, that a lot of people are complaining about, and you guys have brought up, is is uh, the purchasing or the cost of buying just land, hunting land in general. Uh, because it's becoming so popular, and you guys are seeing the costs of properties. I mean, uh, Mike and I purchased our property uh, over the last, what, five years, six years now for you, seven maybe? Yeah, 20, end of 2017. Yeah, here. so basically seven years for Mike and uh, five years for me. Uh, the price that we paid then is dang near doubled. You ain't touching that land. Yeah, that. no. Dang near doubled, and it's only been seven years. Yeah. So buying hunting land is doing nothing but getting more expensive. So I will tell you this, if you plan on purchasing land, do it, do it now. Yeah. Get in there as much as you can, because it's gonna be on most, Beyond most people's reach yeah. here shortly, I think. They ain't They're, making any more land, Carl. No, I agree. hundred <laughs> percent. I mean, I'm watching land in certain areas at that, that ten to fifteen thousand dollars an acre, and that's just hunting land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. So. I've seen ten acres of land go for more than what I paid for this. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it and it's becoming. Uh, it's, and it's, so it's getting worse. Oh yeah. Yeah, if it's in the right spot, people don't hesitate. Yeah, don't buy it. You know, so I think that pretty much covers it. We appreciate the question. Uh, if you guys get a chance, you want to subscribe to the channel, hit the leaper in the lower right hand corner. If you want to listen to this podcast, you can check us out at Spotify, Google, Apple, iHeart, RSS.com, Amazon. And, uh, check out free faces out right here at YouTube. Check out small property layouts on Wednesdays. We appreciate each and every one of you. Yeah, boy.